<laughs> hey gang, and welcome back. Just a reminder, you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA at FlipSideGaming.com. You'll get 10% off orders of $10 or more, and help with the channel at the same time. You could also consider turning off your ad blocker when watching my videos. This week's game, I'm borrowing the Gitrog monster, and I keep ahead with Lanoir Wastes, Two Forests, A Swamp, A Lake of the Dead, Golgari Rot Farm, and Constant Mists. Matt is playing Timna, and he keeps ahead with Anguished Unmaking, Orzhov Basilica, Pain's Reward, Angel's Grace, Walking Atlas, and Two Swamps. Luke, who's new to the channel, is playing Varols and keeps Fintorn Elves, Deathcap Cultivator, Fleshbag Marauder, Putrefy, Wayfarer's Bobble, Underworld Connections, and a Forest. Lastly, Jameson is playing Varel and keeps Tetiova, Murkfiend Liege, Counterspell, Horizon Chimera, Explore, and Temple of Mystery. Matt wins the die roll and starts us off. Matt draws and plays a swamp and passes. I play a forest and I pass my turn. Jameson plays a Temple of Mystery and scries the top card. He puts it on bottom and passes. Luke plays a forest and casts Wayfarer's Bobble. Matt plays a swamp and casts a walking atlas. I play another forest and pass to Jameson. Jameson plays a forest and he casts Explorer. He draws and plays a reliquary tower, passing to Luke. Luke plays a Fintorn Elves and then plays an Evolving Wilds. He sacrifices it to find a basic and passes to Matt. Matt draws and taps his swamps to float two black mana. He plays an Orzhov Basilica, bouncing one of the swamps, and then activates his atlas to put out Command Tower. He taps a Command Tower for a white mana, and uses his floating mana to cast Timna. I play Golgari Rot Farm and bounce a forest to my hand, passing and discarding a forest. Jameson plays a Lanor Reborn, which comes into play tapped. He then casts Varel and grafts the 1 plus 1 plus 1 counter onto him with the Lanawar Reborn trigger. Luke plays what I think is a Foul Orchard, which comes into play tapped, and has enough to cast his own commander, Varols. Matt plays a Swamp for his land drop, and swings Timna at me. He gains 2 life, and then pays 1 in his second main phase to draw a card with Timna's triggered ability. I have a fast turn, playing a Bayou, and I pass. Jameson flashes in his Horizon Chimera on his upkeep, gaining 1 life as he draws in his draw step. He unfortunately doesn't have a land to play, and he passes turn. Luke casts a Hermit Druid in his main phase, and Matt isn't super thrilled with this. Luke then cracks his bobble at the end of turn, and while he's searching, Matt casts Anguished Unmaking, losing 3 life to exile the Hermit Druid. Matt then has the mana still to cast an Enlightened Tutor, and he goes to find a Mana Crypt and put it on top. Matt draws his Mana Crypt for turn, and casts it in his main phase. He swings Timna at me, gaining 2 life, and pays 1 to draw a card. In his second main phase, Matt brings out Evra, Halicon Witness, and passes turn. I play a forest, and bring out the frog itself, the Gitrog monster. I get to play an extra land this turn, and I drop a forest and cast Miri's Guile. I then pass to Jameson. Jameson draws for his turn, gaining 1 life, and he passes to Luke. Luke casts a Fleshbag Marauder in his main phase, and we all sacrifice a creature. Luke then drops a Deathcap Cultivator, and passes to Matt. Matt loses 3 from the Mana Crypt flip, and draws for turn. He moves to combat, swinging Ever at Jameson, and Timna at me. Matt activates Ever's ability, and puts Jameson to 6. Matt then gains 38 life, and pays 2 in his second main phase to draw 2 cards. He plays a Bajuka Bog to exile Luke's graveyard, and he passes to me. I use Miri's Guile, and pick a card. I drop a Swamp, and cast Vraska the Unseen. I downtick Vraska to destroy Evra, because I don't really want to deal with that, but Matt has an answer with Teferi's protection. His stuff fades out, and I pass to Jameson. Jameson draws, and passes turn. Luke plays a Swamp, and casts Death's Shadow. It immediately dies, and he then casts a Stingweed Imp, and passes turn. Matt doesn't take any damage from his Mana Crypt trigger this turn, and draws for turn. He then casts a Demonic Tutor, and finds a card. He swings Evra at me, which I stop by casting Constant Miss with Buyback, sacrificing a Swamp. Matt then drops a Swamp for his turn, and passes. At the end of Matt's turn, Jameson activates Voril to double the counters on Vraska, with the expressed desire that I use it to kill Evra. I'm all too happy to agree to this, but in reality, we actually couldn't have done this. I use my Miri's Guile trigger, and draw the card I want. I then play a Forest, and I recast the Gitrog monster. I drop a Lake of the Dead, sacrificing my Bayou, and I draw a card. I then down tick Frasca even though I shouldn't be able to, and destroy Ever again, and this time it sticks. I then pass turn. Jameson draws and casts a Soul Ring, which is kind of like land. 
He then casts an evolutionary escalation and passes to Luke. Luke casts a grizzly salvage and gets some awful hits, but only in the context of this spell, as he flips mostly dorks and draw spells. He keeps Deathrite Shaman because you can't really play it anywhere else and we now feel bad for it, and he casts it in his main phase. He then casts an Underworld Connection on one of his forests and scavenges the Death Shadow to give Varol's 13 plus 1 plus 1 counters. He then swings his commander at Matt, who takes the hit. Matt loses his Mana Crypt roll and loses another 3 on his upkeep. He draws for turn and he casts Greed. He then pays 2 life to draw a card and plays a Cave of Koilos before paying 2 more life to draw another card. I sacrifice a forest on my upkeep and I draw from the Gitrog trigger. I then draw for turn and I play a Swamp in my main phase. I then cast Seedborn Muse and tap the Lake of the Dead, sacrificing a Swamp to generate 4 black mana and draw a card. I use that 4 black mana to cast a Diabolic Tutor and go to find a card. I can tell you it's a Crucible of Worlds, but the table doesn't know that, so keep it between us. I then uptick Vraska and move to my combat step. Before I move to attackers, Jameson doubles Raska's counters again to try and curry favor with me. Let it be said that I'm not above bribery, but unfortunately this wouldn't have been able to happen. I swing the Gitrog monster at its owner, Matt, and he blocks with Timna, gaining 2 life, and I pass turn. Jameson has his evolutionary trigger put 3 counters on Voril and 3 on my Seedborn Muse, which prompts me to untap my stuff. Jameson is still struggling with lands, so he makes a bold casting of Genesis Wave where X is 3. He hits Simic Signet, Void Slime, and Breeding Pool, which isn't all that bad. He has the pool come into play untapped, taking two, which is a bit of a bold move. Luke casts Drown and Filth in his main phase and targets my Seedborn Muse. He reveals four cards, none of which are land, and all of them would have been better in his hand rather than the graveyard. He then takes one to draw a card with the Underworld Connections and plays a Tainted Wood. Luke then pays one green to his Deathrite and exiles Evra, gaining two life. Moving to combat, he swings the Imp at Jameson and Varols at Frasca. He sacrifices his Findhorn Elves before damage is done to put a Regeneration Shield on Varols, so that when Vraska's trigger destroys it, it doesn't actually. At the end of turn, Matt pays 3 mana and 6 life to draw 3 cards from Greed. Matt avoids damage from his Mana Crypt once more, and he plays a Plains. He then pays 6 to cast Axis of Mortality, and Matt discards down to 7 and passes to me. I sacrifice a Forest on my upkeep, and I draw from the Gitrog Monster, then draw from my turn. I cast a Crucible of Worlds in my main phase, and I play a forest and a swamp for my graveyard. I'm pretty tired at this point, so you'll need to excuse me while I cast an Eternal Witness and immediately put it into my graveyard for some reason while returning Diabolic Tutor. Moving to combat, I swing the Gitrog monster at Luke, who checks to see if he has Delirium. He does, which means that the Death Cap Cultivator gains Death Touch and I'd forgotten about it. Luke blocks with the Cultivator to trade with my Gitrog monster, and I pass, and at the end of turn, Jameson doubles the counters on Boral. Jameson plays a Yavimaya Coast before remembering to put the counters from his Evolutionary Escalation trigger on Voril and Seedborn Muse. He then casts Rishkar's Expertise, and I try to putrefy Voril. Jameson counters the removal with a counter spell, and then gets to draw 14 cards. He puts out a Murkfiend Liege from the second part of the Expertise, and moves to combat. He swings his commander at Matt, who, before moving to blockers, activates Greed, drawing a card, and losing two life. He likes it so much, he does it again, and then a third time, before finally taking one life from the caves, and casts an Angel's Grace. Matt drops to one, but sadly doesn't die. Jameson untaps Voril with Luke's untapping, and Luke plays a forest. Luke then exiles the Deathcap Cultivator to scavenge it onto Stinkweed Imp, giving it 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters, and moves to combat. He swings the Stinkweed at Jameson, the Deathrite at Matt, and Varols at me. Now at this point, I don't think I can win in 1 on 1 against Luke, so I gamble that if I save the table with constant mists and buyback, I'll be able to win in the long run. Luke then loses 1 with the Underworld Connections in his second main phase to draw a card and pass his turn. On Matt's upkeep, he resolves the Axis trigger, first swapping life totals with me, and then rolls for the Mana Crypt trigger and doesn't take any damage anyway. He draws for turn, and he plays an Ancient Tomb. Matt taps the tomb to take 2 and casts Felwar Stone, and then casts an Agent of Erebos to exile Luke's graveyard again. Matt then recasts Timna, and passes. I draw for my turn, and I replay a Swamp for my graveyard. I bring out Geth, and I move to combat. I swing my now huge Seedborn Muse at Matt, who takes the hit for 8. I then pass to Jameson. Jameson puts another 3 counters on Voril, and 3 on my Seedborn Muse. He then plays a Temple of the False God, and casts Unexpected Results, shuffling his library. He reveals a Vivid Grove, putting it onto the field tapped, and putting the Unexpected Result back into his hand. Jameson then casts Tatiova, and wishes he'd cast her before playing the land and casting results. Jameson then swings Voril at Luke, but Luke is able to putrefy the commander before any damage is done. 
In his second main phase, Jameson casts a Coiling Oracle and reveals a Rite of Replication, putting it to his hand. At the end of turn, I activate Geth to bring up Matt's Walking Atlas. Matt also mills two cards, and we move to Luke's turn. Luke taps his Death Rite to exile one of Matt's lands and gains a green mana. He uses it to help cast Gerard's orders, and he goes to find up to two creatures. He puts a Phyrexian Dreadnought into his bin, and a Lord of Extinction into his hand. Luke then scavenges the Dreadnought onto Varols and moves to combat. The Stinkweed Imp goes towards Jameson, while Varols heads back at Matt. Jameson dies, and Matt blocks with Timna, gaining two life. Luke then passes, but at the end of turn, I cycle Decree of Pain to give all creatures minus two minus two, and I draw a card. I then activate Guess Ability, where X is one, to seal Luke's Deathrite Shaman. Matt also has stuff he wants to do, and he pays seven life, six for Greed, and one from Tapping the Caves for black mana to draw three cards from Greed. Matt loses three life from his Mana Crypt trigger on his upkeep, he then loses three more, taking two from Ancient Tomb and one again from the Caves to cast a Moonlight Bargain, and pays ten life to keep all five cards. He then swaps his life total with Luke. Matt then brings out Children of Corliss, and brings out a Phyrexian Unlife. Matt casts a Thought Vessel, and sacrifices the Children to gain sixteen life. He then casts an Aetherflux Reservoir, and passes. At the end of turn, I steal Matt's Agent of Erebos, which exiles Matt's Graveyard upon entering, and then Matt mills Spore. I play a force for my turn and sacrifice a swamp to the Lake of the Dead and tap my mana to seal Matt's soul conduit. He mills six cards and I move to combat, swinging Geth at Matt. Fully in control of this game at this point, Matt pays 50 life to take out Luke. He then drops to one as Geth hits him. With Luke dying, I lose the Deathrite Shaman and Matt has to only tap his pain land to go to zero and then exchange our life totals at the beginning of his next upkeep. Game review time. So this might not have been the best game that it's ever been filmed, but we were tired, it was late, most people had come from work, and this is a good learning experience. I know mistakes can sometimes be annoying for viewers, but this is the first time that Jameson had taken Voril out, so the idea of doubling counters on stuff seemed very cool, but we only realized after the fact that it couldn't be done to Planewalkers. I wasn't able to really get the Gitrog monster going, unfortunately, as I wasn't able to sacrifice very many lands, and I kept having to sacrifice the monster itself. It also didn't help when I swung the Gitrog monster at Luke, who had the Death Touch creature to block with, and I lost my general again. This was probably the second time I've ever played against a Varols deck, and Varols gets a ton of counters for very, very cheap, and I thank goodness that he doesn't come with Trample. I think had Luke been able to find Brawn or another way to give it Trample, we probably would have had a very different game on our hands, but thankfully he didn't, and we were able to chump block him for days. This was also the first time that I'd ever seen a Timna deck where Timna wasn't attached to the hip to Thrasios or some other blue commander. Big props to Matt for building the deck in an unconventional way, and I like the idea that he played a really heavy Life Matters deck. Axis of Mortality was switching life totals left, right, and center, and it was super cool to see. I thought the synergy between Phyrexian Unlife and being able to swap your zero life total with other players was a fantastic way to win. Unfortunately for us, Matt doesn't put his lists online, so maybe if we ask him really, really nicely, he'll consider doing it for us. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at Twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.